Hi, book club members. I'm Jen. And I'm Carrie. And this is Warhammer 40k Book Club, where we read from a crag. This is episode number 85, and our book is Awakenings by George Mann. It tells the continuing adventures of Astor Sabat Thiel, who we have not seen since she appeared in a graphic novel, which is super awesome. We posted several questions on our website, wh40kbookclub.com, and we encourage participation in our conversations via Twitter, YouTube, our site, or Encrypted Vox channel. Spoiler warning, if you haven't yet read this book, go ahead, check out the questions and the book before listening to this episode as we're going to be starting, we're going to be talking about it from start to finish in great detail. With that, let's dive in. Did you like the book? I did. It was fun. I, yeah, I would agree with that. I liked it. I didn't love it. No, I, I didn't like love it. it, but yeah, it was, it was a good time. It was fun. It was, um, it was a very good way to take a character who we haven't seen in a while and I, I always like kind of similar with um with Baggett and Claude I like when characters transfer from one medium to another mm -hmm. and they brought her through the like they brought her up to date in the modern Warhammer 40k mythos so it was kind of nice yeah I wish I had got to read the entire uh comic though I only had uh, review copies of um, the first two volumes but not the third and for whatever reason you can't find it on Titan Comics Comixology or anywhere so I had read all of them but I don't know I, I think I read them digitally yeah, they, so I like, like, like I said, like so I, so I had review copies. So they're like you know they're PDFs with you know huge mm -hmm. watermarks all, all over them. But yeah, I never got the third volume. I only got the first two. So I don't know. Yeah, I had I had all of them, but I couldn't find the files. I don't know what happened to the PDFs. I don't know if they were on my old computer or what. But Actually, I, I I think I just put it together where it was, but so I couldn't go back and find them. Well. But my point here is, like, I put a call out on Twitter. Nobody knows where I can get them. Um, Black Library, I'm looking at you right now. If you're going to release this book, there's a because she references a lot of stuff that happens in those graphic novels. The least you can do is make that available somehow. Like, I'm disappointed Great. in Titan Comics for no longer having it even on their website. Like, at mm -hmm. all. Uh, so... Yeah, and I don't know if that's because Marvel now has the rights to Warhammer 40k and not Titan Comics. I, I don't know if that's the case. And so it's like in a licensing dispute, but ridiculous. I'm not surprised that Black Library has failed in this in this manner because what, what, why would they do anything that keeps anything up to date? Um, right. I mean, we just got single sign-on for GamesWorkshop.com that kind of works. Kind of, mm -hmm. yeah. So, Emphasis on kind of. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it's a good start. It's in a good alpha state. I'll give it that. But, yeah. So, I mean, I know what happens, but I'd like to see how it gets there. Because the end of the second novel of Revelations, that's where it comes out. It's like, oh, you're kind of a heretic yourself. And I'm not surprised that, that the Grey Knights of all the Astartes... The Grey Knights would take a little umbrage with that, and not and not like that very much. So, uh, well, I think my point more was that I read them, but it's been years, mm -hmm. years. I don't even remember when I couldn't find the files, and I had the same problem you had. I was like, "Oh, no big deal. I'll just go and buy them." <laughs> the hell, I will. Like, yeah. could not find them anywhere. I did, checked all the same places you did. I went to Titan Comics. I went to Barnes and Noble. Uh, Amazon. I went to Comixology. I was even looking like on to see if I could find them, like on used book sites. Yes, and yeah. couldn't find them because I wanted to go back and reread it. I mean, I remember like the gist of it, the broad strokes, but like I forgot. To your point, I forgot the whole thing with the demon. Like in my mind. That was like a ruse, like a trap, basically. And then when she kind of is just like, well, look, I just, I did what I had to do. Girl. Girl, I don't remember that at all. And, mm. But, I mean, it's just been so many years. So, yeah, Black Library, come on, guys. I mean, because this is, 
This is an absolutely beautiful collector's edition, and it's a good story, and she's a good character. Yeah. Like, let's get this out. Like, let's figure out what that is. Um, you would think the Titan would still be able to publish it, though, because they would have had that particular license. Yeah, like, it is not there. Because when you know, Titan comes back, Tom, I even just pulled up everything George Mann wrote. Which, in case anybody's interested, he's a really big um in the uh, uh doctor who comics yes so if you really like doctor who comics he's your man over in titan oh, comics i could find so many doctor who comics by him like those i could have found no problem which doesn't help me for this at all oh in twilight zone was um one. yes and that was the other one that i found because i was finding a bunch of stuff that i like, my first thought was that's not the guy i'm looking for and, oh no no that's who i'm looking for but mm -hmm. Yeah, like, this whole comic series seems to have just disappeared, <laughs> which is kind of a propos when you think about it. <laughs> right, and if they wanted to, like, describe that from existence, that's one thing. But the fact that she keeps bringing stuff up with that, like, would have been nice. She, um, well, because that was kind of my thought, too, is I was like, well, it's going to be okay, because maybe they're just going to, like, like, Red oh, yeah, uh, or a, a gray knight killed her. Anyways, moving on with our life. No, like, she's still stuck on she's going to expose the Dark Angels and she doesn't trust any Astartes, you know, so. Um, well, yeah. and that's, I remember that. I remembered her not liking the Dark Angels, obviously, because, but I also did forget that she becomes convinced it's it, every Astartes. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, when she's talking about the Dark Angels and she's just like, oh, they're all traitors. I'm like, what you're saying is true from a certain point of view? Um. They're definitely not, they're definitely loyal to them. Like, this is the thing that we've always talked about, right? They're loyal to themselves first because they've got this secret to hide. Um, but yeah, like, release it, guys. Come on. It, it would be really, it would be awesome because I do feel bad that if you missed the comic series, if you didn't read it, I mean, you can go to some wiki pages, but even the wiki pages, like, I feel like it was somebody like me who was like, oh, yeah, I read that like five years ago. Uh, she's on a ship in the dark angels like it, it's weird like, it makes me wonder if they're, very... if, if they're gonna do like what they did with um oh my god saint David oh saint celestine or not saint not, celestine not, um, not celestine um oh it was like literally right up here yeah 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 Ephrael Stern. Ephrael Stern, I can't yes. believe you don't remember that off the top of your head. Right. I'm sorry. There's so many saints. Um, no, you know, because they, they did like an anniversary edition of the uh, Demon Forge. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if they're going to do something like that. And that's that's fine. But it would have been good if you had done this at the same freaking time. See, okay, to that point, that would have actually been really awesome. Because I do have, like, we have the Ephrael Stern. And it's a neat, even though we didn't super love the story of it, like, it's a neat It's a very edition. important backstory. Like, very. why and this she's would being have been hunted. A really good opportunity. And, you know, her friendship with the Eldar. And, yeah, like, stuff's very, very important. Very important. Anyway. Um, yeah, no, I feel you on that. That was, a, that was actually a little bit of a frustration. Now, no, technically, it doesn't have anything to do with this book, but it kind of does. Like, it did, it made it a, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard when you've. It's been years and, you know, well, I mean, there's a reason that I've read all of the Song of Ice and Fire books twice. Well, some of them three times because there are so many years in between new installments. Yeah, I only read Feast for Crows once. That was a, that was enough. I had to go back and read large swaths of it because we started reading the series at the second book, Clash of Kings. Right. And there was just like, by the time Feast for Crows came out, I was like. Who, what, when, where? Yeah, I started reading out of Storm of Swords. So I probably read those first three about twice. Yeah, I read those first three at least, yes, twice. And then Feast for Crows, I read that and I was like, well, that was a slap in the face. And then uh, I've never read past the first two chapters of A Dance with Dragons. Um, having finished the whole thing, I'm not sure you're missing anything. Anyways, what parts stood out to you about Awakenings? Oh, uh, it was kind of an, it was a very interesting, um, kind of, n sort of a whodunit, like an Inquisitor's whodunit. 
this, this, we we know who did it, but the thing is, but why though? <laughs> and just to see the different pieces, how they all kind of lined up and then yet didn't in this fantastic way that the Warhammer 40k does. And then of course there's like the fun twist at the end. Um, yes. I mean, there's, I, mean, I, I like a good mystery and right. really kind of piecing around like how this all fits and doesn't fit was really kind of fascinating, even though really at the end when it all, not the very end, but when, but, but when uh, the, the nurgling demon like, kind of comes forth and I'm kind of looking at that main inquisitor, uh, uh, Sinjan, I'm just like, is this what you wanted or are you either dumb or are you just evil and we're just like playing with this just to see what would happen and then move on like i couldn't really figure out what his like main purpose was and with the inquisition not a single one of those answers would surprise me yeah that's true but that's all i could think when the thing like erupts out of the custodians i was like you dumb bastard <laughs> you <laughs> dumb bastard <laughs> all i could think of it's like... not a schooner it's a sailboat <laughs> It's not the Emperor Reborn. It's a Nurgle demon. <laughs> like, I mean, to be fair, like, you could see how you would easily get those two things confused. Um, it, yeah. yeah I, I knew there was something demonic going on, but you didn't know what until they're meeting with the governor. And he's just like, look at the Emperor's blessings. And they're like, oh, huh, huh, no. <laughs> yeah, I do love how they're just like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's that gross. Is, it's not a blessing. <laughs> That's kind of a fun one. Um, yeah. These are all things where it's like, oh my gosh. Um, I liked all of the, and we'll talk a lot more about her retinue in a second, but I thought they played off one another really well. I liked one of her my retinue. Favorite, one of my favorite scenes in this book, though, comes from that tarot reading, which I could tell when you had read it because we were both, you were like, I want the tarot deck. <laughs> and I was like, me too. And then we're both like, like but we want this one too. I want this deck, though. Like, literally want this deck. Um, I'm just kidding. It, it sounds dangerous. Um, no, but... I loved cool. that scene. I thought it was super funny. and Or so, super fun. I liked... I thought it was funny how he's like, starts off being like, mm-hmm, sure, Jan. And then slowly but surely, he's like, uh, oh, like, <laughs> something very wrong is happening here. Um, wrong slash right, question mark? Mm-hmm. But I thought that whole scene unfolded so well because it just starts off. I mean, it, it's very, it's very pedestrian. You know, he goes in, he kind of scares the gangers a little bit, meets mm -hmm. the lady. Um, the cards sound amazing. And I love when she's proclaiming what each one is. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. Because they all start like clicking. And I like stuff like that because then you sit there and you're like, okay, what's going to be? each piece what's going to be the cuckoo what's going to be this what's mm -hmm. going to be that like what how is this all going to play in together i love that kind of stuff to well, your it, point well just like you Mystery. know like, like you know the the first card and she says what it is and he's like that's not even part of the emperor's deck like you're like he's immediately like writing he's like you're a charlatan you know i'm gonna have to kill you because you're a charlatan but let's just go on ahead just for amusement just keep on reading she brings another card and it's another card that's not in the emperor's deck he's getting pissy and then he sees that she's bleeding out her eyes and i was like wait wait hold on <laughs> yeah, that's, wait can well and the fact that it all kind of lines up right when he's like i'm sorry what and he's looking oh, at the yeah. card because she, the... she flips because i think it was that third card it was the queen of ruin he's like wait a second how do you know her Pretty much, because yeah. she kind of makes the commentary that he's like, this all lines up. Yep. Um, yeah, that whole scene was really well done. Um, I find the tarot very fascinating in general, because as, as very anti-psyker and just like, keep your nose down, stick to your stuff... The tarot is one of those very esoteric things that I'm like, really? This is okay. Um, and I think it's because we've seen in a lot of stories, we've seen that things manifest through the tarot. <laughs> like, um, Or that people just believe that that's really showing you the, the emperor's will. Like, it's like a little safety thing. Like, 
you know, that I am, that I am, you know, following the emperor as well. But it just also kind of shows something that they don't really show you, tell you very often that a real tarot reader, like, they kind of give their lives in service, which kind of sucks. You are, I mean, essentially, they, they heavily imply that with the tarot, you're, you're very much like communing toying. with the emperor or the, or I hesitate to say the warp, but you were definitely skirting a line there, especially like this lady, right? Well, I mean, you're... It, and it could be you're actually like communing with the emperor because what do they talk about? Like some with, with the saints, the ones that are actually, you know, embodying the emperor, how quickly they burn out because they can't handle, you know, it kind of makes me think of, uh, you know, in the movie uh, Dogma, when they, you know, they were saying that he, when he inhabits, you know, a human's, a human's body, they really can't take it, and yet he can only God can only be in the body for so long before he totally destroys it, which they kind of showed like at the end when they pulled the plug on the ski ball guy. Um, it's kind of that same thing, which I'm like, that sucks. It really, really yeah. sucks, and it and it just kind of goes back to really, you know, something that we talked about with the Dark Imperium. You know, when uh, Frater Matthew is yelling at uh, Reboot, and he's like, "Doesn't he love us?" And he realizes he loves mankind, but he doesn't give a shit about any of us. We're all just tools. Oh. Well, and one of the other scenes from the tarot that I really liked with the tarot that we read was in um, the... Was that in the first Dawn of Fire book by Guy Haley? With the the lowly menial who gets that sign, right? And she's like, I've got to go and tell somebody because I've gotten a sign in the tarot. And she gets there. Oh, it's like a meaningless, like, basically. Like, well, she discovers that, like, 50 thousands. Other pe yeah, thousands of other people have the same thing. And, yeah, um, I think that was definitely one of the Dawn of Fire books. I don't know which one, though. I think it was the first. It might have been the uh, first. But that's just... It's one of those little fun little flavor text things that gets sprinkled into some of the 40k books. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was used really well here. Um, I also liked, and I thought about you, uh, in the beginning when they go down to that planet and there's the, the pyramids and the zinchi people. You know, good old zinchi people in the pyramids. Makes you think of me how? Beca because you like, you, you like, you know... You like the Thousand Suns and their pyramids. And I was like, oh, it's a pyramid, but not that kind of pyramid. I don't even know how to take that. Anyway, um, <laughs> I was just like, I think of Zinchi people. Oh, I think of Carrie. Wait, what? When you read about the Night Lords, you're like, oh, Jen. Yeah, but them being, you know, Night Lords. Well, right, but not Zinchi. Anyway, Z anyway, I'm, anyway. So what did you think? So let's let's start with Aster, uh, because we're on a first name basis. Um, let's start with Aster. What did you think of her as a character? What did you think of her as an inquisitor? Is she a good inquisitor or a bad inquisitor? I feel like that's the question we have to always lead with when it comes to inquisitors. Well, I mean, she definitely has the I don't trust no one thing down. She is smart in that regard, right? That... Yeah, she she is she's questioning. Yeah, she's very smart. She, but again, it's like kind of what we saw from the comics that she's questioning almost to her detriment, and I, maybe she's not questioning the right things sometimes. Um, but at the same time, like I can't fault her too much because you know things are kind of just a little different than how they were when uh, she uh, went to the Califrax system. So, um, I mean, I think it's just more of a big line of her just trying to, like, find herself, find what's going on. You know, obviously, you know, she thought she could maybe get back in with her uh, conclave. And no, well, we don't really. But she did. Well, I mean, that's not a yes or a no. Maybe, maybe not. She has no idea. Like, was Sinjon acting alone or was that is he acting the will of the conclave? Who knows? And... To me, honestly, this whole thing kind of really highlighted between her and Sinjon and um, I can't remember the name of the that first Inquisitor. The one who gets killed, like, starts with an H, I think. Anyway, um, about how when you have this... Eldrin? Yeah. When you have this absolute autonomy and you answer to nobody but the Emperor, 
it, it's the Wild West is really what it all, all comes down to with with these tactics. So it is. And in a lot of ways, I, I find Sabathiel very fascinating because she is the cautionary tale. Right. Um, she and it, it's it's OK. I'm going to say that it's very frustrating, but I mean that like in a really good, fun way for her character that she caught wind of arguably one of the biggest secrets in the Imperium. There are dark angels that are traitors, mm -hmm. right? Um, now, she is presented with a piece of evidence, and then she proceeds to, like, draw the exact wrong conclusions from it. Oh, well, all of the dark angels are bad. I mean, maybe. But then the fact that because of her life experiences, and the thing that's equally, and again, I mean this in a really good way, that's frustrating is that because of her life experiences, you totally understand why she's going down this path. But now you have this person who answers only to the emperor, mm -hmm. complete autonomy, and wields an exorbitant amount of power who is now convinced that all of the Adeptus Astartes are traitors. Right. Oh, and that scene when she comes across the custodies and she's like, oh, they're not even, they don't even really look human. Just like the Astartes. Now, now like that, my takeaway from that is she's like, mm hmm, bet you these bastards are in on it too. Like, honey, honey. Like that is not. Nah. Like, she's honestly probably convinced herself that the Grey Knight shot her to, or killed her because she was getting too close to the truth. When it was really like, uh, no, you have a demon host, and that's bad. <laughs> Space books said that very bad. Well, the, I mean, the Grey Knights of all <laughs> of the Space Marines take a particularly hard nose look at that. <laughs> like, there's, there's a reason why they're assigned to Malleus and not Xenos and Hereticus. Cause, yeah, yeah, because that's that's their expertise is with you know, demon. Mm -hmm. demon shit and so yeah so they're like wait what are you doing like it's not that you're like holding it down there for some like for torture or whatever you're like using it no that's bad you know yeah like whatever's going on here ain't kosher and while we agree with you that maybe something's rotten in the state of caliban um this is a very immediate threat right here. And and I think the Grey Knights, too, and this is always one of those fun dichotomy because we saw this again with the Space Wolves, right? They, they recognize that the, the Inquisitors, there's a lot of potential for damage there mm -hmm. because they are so unchecked, because they wield so much power, because they have so much knowledge. Like, you guys are, <laughs> using the current nomenclature, you guys are problematic, like very um so in some ways i was like oh thank god he killed her <laughs> leo for i was like you you should have like double tapped um i understand like i vaguely remember that they were like under a time constraint and so they had to get out of that ship yeah. but um well it's not like there's it, warp storms coming in so it's like we gotta go <laughs> make it quick. right it, it just adds this really fun essentially I mean, almost not chaotic in the sense of like the Warhammer 40k, but like in the true like alignment, right? This chaotic entity in her of, yep, I don't trust any of my fellow Inquisitors, valid, uh, and I don't trust any of the Space Marines. That's going to like shorten <laughs> your life. Uh, considerably. I, I think we've mentioned on here before, I really like true crime podcasts, and I listened to this one that was actually terrible because the two ladies hosting it the first season they were just awful but it was really kind of it was, it was an interesting thought experiment because it was, it was it's called um hell and gone and um i had to think about that one um essentially these two ladies try to figure out who killed this one woman and because they're like oh the police grabbed the wrong person and that might be true but they end up making the same mistakes going down this investigatory path where they're like I don't like this piece of evidence. I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to go down this path. And it, it just reading this book, Astro Sabathiel reminds me of that so much, mm. except like in a fun kind of way, because again, what, what is a character like this in the 40 K universe? Like wh what is she going to think about Robbie being back? We already know that some of the inquisition does not like that Gulliman is returned. Right. 
especially, and especially with what she thinks of the Astartes in the first place. And now here's like one of the fathers of the Astartes, you know, yeah. and what's fascinating to me with Reboot's return, especially like on Terra, and that's mainly, I think it's part because the, the High Lords, are, they don't want to lose their power. But, you know, their first thing that they went to is like, we can't trust any of the Primarchs because half of them, you know, turned against the Emperor. It's like, well, it's really cute. Like, who you guys choose to let, know that information. But that's what they always go to. And I'm sure the Inquisition, or at least most of them, knows the truth or a semblance of the truth. Of the, of the Primarchs, and I could just totally see most well, of them kind of being I mean, that it, same way. It depends, right? Because we saw that with uh, Crowl. Oh, that's Crowl, right. who Crowl. is based on Terra. Yeah, when he goes down there and he's like, who are these other assholes sitting around with the Emperor? None of this makes sense. Right? <laughs> right? Like, there's so much. It, like, yeah. and yet, and yet, we're presented in that stupid Beckwin book, right? Where that just lady... That person. Oh, everybody knows on some that this, this, this random planet. It's like, well, we know that there's two missing primarchs, and everyone in the room goes, "Yeah, <laughs> really." But yeah, they, they all subscribe to the Warhammer 40k equivalent of Alex Jones. Um, they, um, but Aster <laughs> Sabathia, like, it makes her. It oh, again. Wow. Yeah, there was, there, there was a cut for you. Um. The, I just, I love the idea of having this character who comes in and is like, oh yeah, not only do I, but here's the thing that's even better about her, because not only does she have all this power and all this influence, and she could show up and like, if the High Lords of Terror are just like, oh, we don't like the Primarch, she can be like, oh yeah, you definitely shouldn't, because let me tell you what I know, she's a faulty witness, right? Because right. wait a minute, weren't you the chick who was dead for a hundred years in a warp storm? I mean, maybe. <laughs> right. I mean, how trustworthy is that? You know, and I know we're going to get to it, but, you know, we get to her benefactor. There's some questions there about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about her retinue, like, first, because there's so we'll talk specifically about Medic and Mandrith in a second, because those two are a whole mood, as the kids would say. Um. <laughs> What did you think of her retinue? All of the people who are surrounding her, all of the people who are surrounding Mandrith. Uh, so I liked all of them. Every single I one of them. I did too. Uh, I really like like her and I really liked her interrogator. It always cracks me up how they, how the writers usually you know portray the interrogators, because you know Eisenhorn he didn't have one after what happened to Ravener, and then. Um, Ravener's interrogator. God, I can't remember his name now. But I really liked him and I felt really, really bad for him for what happened to him. Uh, because it's not like he was looking for demon possession. Uh, it just It just happened. Um, and I never liked the way that they treated him. Even though he was very smart. Uh, and it was actually like he was good in a fight. But but because of the way that he dressed, because he was just so prim and proper, they mocked him and, you know, and everything. And I just never understood that. And her interrogator here is kind of the same way, but not for the same reasons. It's not that he dresses nice or anything. They just know they just treat him weird. And I, I don't know if it's because they're afraid that he's feels like he's more superior with them, but, but I don't think he feels that way at all. Like he, if anything, he sees how everybody fits in better than anybody else there. And I would say that's true. The whole, the whole dalliance into like how much he loves to torture people and he loves to crack people open. I was like occupational hazard. Um, I thought maybe that was why people were kind of weird to him because he definitely seemed half a bubble off. But again, honestly, I think occupational hazard. I think it's also that, um, those uh silk and um mercy yeah silk and mercy they saw him as weak in a fight too and that they there saw him that. they saw him as complaining when he really wasn't complaining they just because he didn't fall in line with what they needed him to do there was mm -hmm. 
there was there was a constant uh, mocking, but he always came through when he needed to. So at the same time, mm-hmm. it, all, it all all kind of made sense. Um, and he really does show where his loyalties lie. He does, and I, I think, and I was a little, I'm, I, I have to say, I was very pleased because, it's, especially in the beginning, when he, like with, with so much so much emphasis on mm-hmm. the fact that he does enjoy the torture part of his job and that yeah, he enjoys the interrogation a little bit too much oh, too much um, Bloodheim. That's his name. Bloodheim. and then he um because he enjoyed that wow. so much wow <laughs> on the nose there black library once again dear god subtlety of always two by four um they um because of all of that and because of the whole tarot scene when he was like, oh, my God, um, I was really worried that they were going to either have him try to betray Sabathiel or he was going to turn out to be a traitor or something like that. Like there was going to be something not right about him. I was I was waiting for that, like waiting for that moment when he's just like, and guess what? I've been working for the bad guys the whole time. Or maybe um, or I was actually kind of worried they're going to make him be like Carl from Ravener. You know, yes, he was going to unwittingly unleash something bad. Yes, very much so. There was going to be something wrong with him. So in the very end, um, like I even love, I loved the scene when he tackles Medic because mm-hmm. he's just like, no. And of course, Medic's like, what are you talking about? Like, why would I do this? And then, of course, he's like, sorry, carry on. <laughs> Like, the, like, that was my, that was the other thing that I was just like, and that scene was a little strange too, but I guess we'll just blame the fact that a literal demon was like spawning in the corner. Um, kind of a poor, I really liked poor it. custodies. <laughs> poor guy. I felt so awful for him. Um, my favorite character, of course, of her retinue was Brondel. I thought he was just. Oh my God. God, he was fun as hell. He like, was space dwarves. So, I need more of them in my life. He was okay. Was he a dwarf or was he a rattling? I really they kept saying squat, but then they were talking about his feet, and I was like, is maybe he's a rattling? So the squats, the squats are basically dwarves. I think they're, um, I think they're rebranding them as the Votan. I don't. I'm gonna be really sure. honest, and somebody, Skywatcher adept, if you're out there, um could definitely use a little bit of clarity on that but yeah they're basically um we'd only i'm trying to think the last place we saw one the last place that you would have saw one was one popped up in the eisenhorn books i can't even remember the last time we saw one but anyways they um the space dwarves i need more space dwarves they were so much fun with his beard and he was a good sense of humor when he had Nall throw him which also i need more quasi smart useful ogrins in my life oh my gosh right he was fun too i thought i thought they did a really good job of building this band of merry men around her and women obviously uh they were fun silk with her gauss weapon yeah yeah i was like wow i guess it's a good thing that we're not with the ordo xenos are are we it's but but then again you know there is that branch of assassin that also uses um uh necron tech so you know Calidus. Is, is that the Calidus that uses it their phase blade is okay. necron. i don't i don't remember um, they all i mean i think they all have a little i mean except for the vindicari <laughs> yeah um well and i don't think the eversource do either because <laughs> There's, there's just other things going on there. Um, well, there's just so pumped full of uh, Bane venom that, you know. <laughs> basically, yes. yes. <laughs> That's basically it, yes. Um, but it it's kind of... it's. I thought they did a really good job of building. I was... I think having read the Covenant books... I was, having read the Covenant books... I was a little concerned about her retinue at the beginning. I was like, oh, what is going on here? But then, no, they all turned out to just be really fun. I liked that Mercy. Mercy was pretty much a flat line. Yeah. Like, she starts, middles, ends in the same place. And actually, kind of all of them do, except for Bloodheim. He has a little bit of a, like, but 
No, they were fun. They bolstered it. I liked every one of them in their. Um, I liked all of them from their point of view chapters. I thought they were. I thought mm-hmm. they were they were a really good job to surround her, especially. Especially given what we know about her. I right. think it'll be interesting in future books to see how some of these characters respond to some of her uh, ideologies. Right. Like, how was Bloodheim going to take it when he first find when he. I mean, here he talked about how he knew because he'd done his research because a good mm-hmm. interrogator would. But if she does that again, keeps a demon host because she was pretty much very much like out in the open with it all. She's like, and I would do it again because these are tools and which again that's like something that goes against every little core of the Grey Knights uh, something I learned in reading Annandale's Grey Knights book um, Son of Titan which I know like, you know you can make a drinking game of whenever you know Jen brings up Night Lords you can make a drinking game of when I bring up you know son, uh, Sons of Titan because I can't that's like such a great book if you want to learn about the Grey Knights I can't really I cannot recommend it enough but that's something they, that they talk about is how when it comes to the other ordos of the Inquisition, they cannot deal with what they call the Xanthites. Those that, like the, the Ordo of Xenos that will actually utilize Xenos technology to, to f- further their own research. They hate that. So I have to put that on her for not doing her own due diligence and researching like where the Great Knights come from with the Ordo Malleus because Ordo, well, some people of the Ordo Malleus, again, who would have a demon house, again, those would be Xanthites, that the Grey Knights would have killed on on, on the spot. Gotta know your audience. So, so like, You do. Part of me wonders, though, with her, just given her, like, given her mentality and just kind of her state of being, if she is one of and we've again we've seen this before with inquisitors if she is one of those (laughs) i'm sorry i call the shots here you don't question me like it's cute and all that you're a space marine but you don't question me i'm i'm the one in control here again referencing again exactly (laughs) do you feel in charge Mm -hmm. um like referencing again that um is it the emperor's gift yeah the emperor's gift um referencing that when he's just like oh no space wolves are going to do what i tell you to do oh no okay we'll just kill you then that's fine um a part of me wonders if she was operating under that assumption of either i can hide this from the gray knights or they're not going to question their betters right. i'm an inquisitor i i think that she right. went into the latter i kind of think so too just because that or maybe she just did it maybe it never even occurred to her that wait they, i mean that they won't understand that this is a tool no, honey. No, they won't. Okay. So let's let's talk about Medic. Let's start there. What's his angle? Do I have you no think? idea. Oh, man. That was my only disappointment is I kind of wanted it. Like, I wanted a, a nugget. It's like, like, throw me a bone. So he's brought there to, like, bring her back. And he talks about how Man- Mandrath was the one behind it. But then... He's like, well, I don't know, Mandrith. It's like, well, why are you here? Or is this like a just big, a big experiment of fun to you? Just to see what you could do and if it would work. And you just want to go hang out because you want to see your work in action. Because I could totally see Mechanicus being like that. Kind of, yes. And that's one of those things where I'm like, did you do this because you were ordered to do this? Or is, or is it, it just a fun challenge? I think. I, were you like, oh, <laughs> I could do that. I have a feeling it might have been a fun challenge because I don't know why else he would stick around if it was because he was ordered to. Right. Like at this point, are you emotionally and mentally invested in the experiment? Um, like we're agreed. There's something off with him, though, right? Well, yes. And not just your typical distrust of the mechanicus. No. Because, like, like, on many ways, like, I, I like the guy. Like, he wasn't, he, he didn't embody the reasons why I can't stand the Mechanicus. I'll put it, I'll, I'll put it that way. <laughs> embody. Um, but he, um, but I don't know what his game is either. Like, what's. No. 
And I'm really torn on whether or not I like that because as an author from a George Mann perspective, that is just one of many tools that he has in his box, right? That he can deploy at, in future stories to be like, oh, BT dubs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the other hand, I, like, I wanted like, just again, just a nugget, just a nugget of hinting what this person, what his motivations are uh, beyond, well, man just told me to do the thing. Um, I could see a lot of different things happening with him. Like I could see a lot of different reasons for this. He is, he definitely reminds me of kind of the uh, nutty professor <laughs> type yeah. of mechanicus. You know, the ones who are just like, oh, we can, we should. Um, I'm going to experiment on stuff. Like I, I can definitely kind of see that being a thing for mm-hmm. him. Um, I could also see it he has an angle i I could see that he has something i don't know what something that's going to benefit him somehow because the only thing i know about the mechanicus is that it all comes to benefit them maybe not the maybe not the imperium but definitely them right um yeah that so that was one where i was like oh i don't know what your angle is here buddy Let's talk about Mandrith. Let's. So my big question with him is. I was going to say, can we divorce the last chapter from his arc? But I don't think so. I think it kind of no, all. Because, but no, we can't because of my question. So my question is. Yeah, I, I kind of sense where your question's going because I have the exact same question. How long has he been possessed? I have no idea. And is the possession why he brought her back? Okay, let's, because here, come down this thoughts experiment with me, because I know you, and you're probably having the exact same thought experiment that I'm having currently. Let's pretend he gets possessed at the end of the book. Okay. Um, when that tendril kind of reaches out and snaps at him, right? Like, let's, let's pretend that. Okay. okay. That's an interesting one. Okay, I like that. What's his angle? Why, as an Inquisitor, would you go out of your way? First off, who, what, when, where, why, how? Like, how but did you know? But that's why I want to know. That's why, because if he was possessed by this demon, and that was part, you know, before she came back, and that was, like, part of it, then I want to know why. Why would a demon care? What is, what is, what is that angle? But if he wasn't possessed until the end... That might make some sense about why they would suddenly, they suddenly left. But then when he's, but, but I don't think it's that demon though. Because I don't think this is Nurgle. I think this is Zinch. Because he keeps talking about a plan. I have to agree with you. None of it. Like this doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like Nurgle's idiom. Right? To like continue to just appear like a normal inquisitor like nurgle no, because no because is not about nurgle can't do that it's because huge because if you're being possessed like it's gonna show you're gonna have your liver hanging out and all sorts of things and you're gonna be so happy about it. it's gonna be the best day of your life right because they're all about the rot and the decay and everything yeah. else like when nurgle plots as we've seen it's more of like that scene from um is it Dawn of Fire? No, it's from the um, the third. Is it from the God? I don't remember. Whatever the the book, <laughs> the Gee Haley book, where um, they have the uh, I cannot think, the historiator go and find the book about the Unrumored uh, Empire. Yeah. yeah, that they they don't they don't Nurgle doesn't strike me as the type of guy who sends his demons down to do some subterfuge. They let the humans just kind of but because that all fits within their decaying idiom right Right. of like look this is we're going to morally decay this guy with this knowledge and that's going to cause problems um that's why i have to assume i can't like i i want i want to imagine that maybe he gets possessed in that scene but it just doesn't feel like nurgle no i mean in many ways it, it would it would make sense or, or 
There's always a possibility that he got possessed. What if Sinjin is actually the good guy here and he was like tracking Mandrath who already had been possessed? And so his whole thing is that he's going to wipe out everyone that Mandrath had ever been around, which is Heldren and now um, And there Aster. just happened to be a plot to bring back a new emperor that like was going on there. Maybe that was an investigation to see like how far that corruption went. We don't know. Um, Maybe. So, so I want to, so there's always that question of like Mandrith was possessed like after he decided to, decided to bring her. And that was part of like, that would just be like so funny to me. Honestly, it turns out Sinjin was actually the good guy. <laughs> You know what? I'll be honest. I kind of kept waiting for that. At the end, like the last I kinda four or to. five chapters, I was kind of waiting for there or there to be a hint of like, you don't see what's going on with you, the person, your benefactor here. Like I was kind of waiting for that. Like, or like I was waiting for that scene where all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, she's completely misread this, the room. Like she's mm -hmm. completely misread the room entirely. But I didn't get that um so then okay we we assume that he he wasn't possessed then so is he possessed before or after he helps her initially and i have to i have to assume it's before because the thing that i keep coming back to is how did he know to find her in this warp storm how did he know to get her like all of these connections and stuff like that and if it's zinch it would make sense that he'd be like no on the nurgle plot just no or and because he's more on a he's more of a bigger picture kind of guy he's not thinking right today he's thinking okay i need this woman to be trusted because i need her in a position right shit i mean i need her because maybe someday she gets close enough to robbie g i mean really this, this it, it could be all of these things i mean <sighs> One thing about Zinch is that he plays the 3D regicide. <laughs> Maybe he even Very plays the 4D so. regicide at this point. I don't know. So he's yeah. making moves like years in advance that we don't know what they mean. And, you mm -hmm. know, and the way that Zinch goes is like everything falls apart. And he's just like, oh, yes, exactly how I had it planned. You know, and that's it's all kind of, coming together. You know, and that's actually one thing that I found so funny to be honest with the, the Ariman trilogy is that yeah that's totally how the Z whole Zinch thing works yes I knew you were going to betray me I've been waiting for this moment for it to all fall apart because this is exactly what I had planned I'd hoped it wouldn't go this way but I knew it was going to like okay he's very Zinchy <laughs> oh your mic just went out yeah. Okay, I heard that. Hello? Okay, that, there we go. Yeah. Um, weird. Yeah. Um, so Discord. <laughs> or just my mic. Um, actually, I think it, I think it might be my headphones. Um, the. <sighs> yes, I I agree, and it feels very much like that, and yet, and okay. Mm. the other reason so here's the thing about that end chapter that i was like oh god now i have more questions i felt like from the very beginning basically as soon as he popped up i was like oh you can't trust this guy there's something not right about him the thing that continues to bother me is that basically everyone's like like at the very end there when she's talking with the other inquisitor and he's just she's just like so you sent mandrith after me and he's like oh <laughs> i don't know this person yeah i i feel like you should like and granted there's so i mean there's enough inquisitors out there like because the, we've, we've seen that before with inquisitors where they're just like mm, i don't actually know this person like once you get to a certain level of infamy yes we know you um but before that probably not really right M mandrith seems well enough connected that i would ex expect and yet in that end scene, we are shown that, yeah, there was an Inquisitor named Mandrith. There totally was. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed really weird to me that a person with as much power and authority, and I can't, I cannot remember the name of that Inquisitor at the very end there, um, that it, it just seems weird to me 
that he doesn't know who he is. Like, I, yeah, I yeah, the, like, but I didn't really, Jarek. I didn't really think anything of that just because there, oh my God, there's so many Inquisitors. Right. It could be. Um, so then. Especially with like the Ordos, like, because we don't know exactly what Ordo he's in either. He never said which Ordo he was in. He really didn't say a lot about himself other no. than he just kind of has this mischievous uh, demeanor to him. So what's his angle? If he is, if he was possessed when he first, and he like possessed through this whole thing, okay, some zinchi stuff, right? But if he wasn't at some point, right? This has been bothering me for like a long time now. Oh yeah, like I like the I ended the book with a whole lot more questions and answers. Right, but and I think that's how the Inquisitor books go. Right, because honestly, even yeah. at, even at the end of the last Eisenhorn book, you're still left with a whole bunch of questions. And that's kind of how, and I feel like it's, I feel like that's kind of part and parcel of the Inquisition because they're always pulling on sweater threads, right? And so, sometimes they pull too hard. Sometimes they pull a little too hard. Um, so. Or they Let's pull one looking. thread thinking it's for one sweater and it's for these two other sweaters over here. It's like, oh, crap. Oh, exactly. <laughs> All of a sudden they're like, oh, <laughs> whoops. Um, yeah. Or when you um, when you start pulling on the sweater thread and all of a sudden you realize that they must have run out of yarn. So like you only pull like this much yarn and you're like, oh, oh, I thought that was going to go the whole way. Um. So we talked a little bit about it with the whole, like, what did you think of the central plot of this? With, like, the whole, we're going to rebirth the Emperor and... Well, Just I mean, kidding, it was Colonel. Well, I mean, it's a plot... It's a demon plot we've seen before, like, in in different short stories. And we've seen cool. it with uh, Nurgle and with Zinch. Uh, so it's just, like, as soon as they said, but we're going to bring the Emperor back right then, I'm like, oh... You dumb bastard. Funny that you said that because it just occurred to me. You are correct. I feel like Corn and Slanesh, people are pretty much like aware of what they're doing. Like it was never trickery. Like, ha ha ha, just kidding. You, you summon to keep her secrets. You summon to bloodthirster. Like, oh, no, like yeah, they, yeah. I mean, the Keeper of Secrets, maybe you personally didn't know that that's what you were doing, but the other people involved definitely did. When you just didn't realize that your murder fucking was going to bring in a Keeper of Secrets, like, oh, wait, what? Well, like, I think about with the, uh, I think about with um, Shroud of Night, where, like, oh, oh, damn it, it's a Keeper of Secrets. And the guys are just like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Like, it's, I guess, yeah, that is kind of within Nurgle's all of the spout, like, ha, gotcha. Um, whereas Zinch, of course, is more of the, exactly what I planned all along. Mm -hmm. um, that was just a really funny observation that I hadn't really, like, <laughs> consciously thought of. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, I was with you on that, where I'm like, oh, like, again, with the whole, look at the blessings of the Emperor. Does those look like blessings to you? Well, I guess when you're that high on Nurgle, yes. I don't want to be high on Nurgle. No. Can I make that really clear? No, but, you know, one thing I'll say about Nurgle, though, <laughs> is that at least if you get infected, you're very happy about it. So at least it's they not like... you tend to be a little, like... So mm. at least it's not like you're just like, oh, my God, I'm hideous the rest of my life. You're just like, look at these blessings. It's just so wonderful. I got to give him that. I always think of Vorks where he like when he talks about how he has the fluid in his lungs and he's like, yeah, over the years I have thought that something was a poor gift, but then it turned out to be really useful. I'm, I'm too vain for Nurgle, guys. Again, like at least at least like he makes people happy about it. It is true. Um. If you're going the to be ugly and like, the prize. and like, you know, if you're going to be ugly and your flesh is rotting off and you're going to live forever looking like that, at least you can use be happy about it. <laughs> That's true. 
Um, that's true. I yeah, the custodies was a bit of a surprise for me. I was like, oh, oh. Like for some reason that like escalated all of the the whole well, story well, like stepped up a notch. Well, just the fact that they had like kidnapped the custodies. I'm just like, you guys know what you've done. <laughs> Where did you find this person? How did you take this person down? What uh, are you what doing? What was he doing off of Terra? So many questions. So many questions. Like, did they, did they order him and like he came in a deep freeze? <laughs> like somebody captured him somewhere and then he, he ended up like on the black market? <sighs> Is there a... It's like a human trafficking ring, but for like custodies for like rituals. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. And it's probably I mean, traitors. I mean, like on Terra, we've seen, we've read some shit that goes down on Terra. Okay. Yeah. So, some stuff happens on Terra. Like I, I kind of feel like maybe, maybe that's kind of a thing. Cause I had the same question. I'm like, okay. If it had been like just a space Marine, I'd be like, oh. Okay, like, I don't know the particulars here, but I guess I could see this, but a Custodes? That's, That's not, a rare breed. Well, it's not only that, but it's like, you do know that they do count everybody who's in the Custodes, right? They all know all 10,000 of them. Well, it'd be like if somebody, like, you went to somebody's house because they wanted to show you their pet bird and it was a condor. You'd be like, I have so many questions right now. <laughs> like... Lots of questions. <laughs> what do you feed it? Um, that that whole thing and like this Emperor Reborn, I do like. I, I liked. I thought that it made a lot of sense, and I did like it because, again, with the opening of the rift, we're seeing so much badness happen and a lot of desperation. Right? Like we're seeing these people who are everybody's desperate. The, the emperor has gone dark for a hot minute, right? The mm -hmm. the astropaths are going crazy. Like everything's like it's all very bad right now. So I liked. I I thought it made sense. It all tracked. I really liked when they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna rebirth the emperor." I like where your heart's at, but no. I mean, yeah. I mean, like like you're saying, I could totally see where where they. You know, but you know, it's kind of the same conclusion that you know I've made on on my own that maybe the emperor just needs a reboot, not a. It's wow, one. I wasn't even going there until I said it out loud. But also, I'll take it. That is pretty good, actually. Yeah. He has one though. <laughs> right. So I could see maybe where people would you know possibly think that. I think it'd be a very easy thing to get people to think of too. Like he yeah. just needs a new vessel. Right. And we just so happen to have that vessel. Isn't that nice? Um, so well, let's they talk said that, about... Well, they said that they tried it on humans, right? And that it didn't work? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Should have been a sign, y'all. Um, so let's... Let's go back to Jarek for a second and Heldrin. What do you... Do you trust either of these dudes? Like we, I we trust clearly don't Hel trust Mandrith. I trust Heldrin. You trusted him? Yes. And I mean, well, either I trusted him, and that's why he got himself killed, was because he was on the right path, or it's a bad thing to trust him because Sinjin's actually the hero of the story, <laughs> and the guy needed Sinjin to go. Throw out that accusation, right? Where he's just like, oh, yeah, he sent you. And, and and remember when they're on that planet with the pyramids, which made me think of you, that there's the body. I didn't mean it as weird as it sounded. Okay. There are Zinchi people. I thought of you. Like, because of my third arm? Like, what? <laughs> because you're sympathetic to the Thousand Sons. Not to Zinchi um, people. Anyway. Anyways, um, you, if you recall, when they're up by the pyramid, they're looking at some of the dead bodies and they're like, these are inquisitorial agents. Right. And Sinjin does say that. He's just like, oh, yeah, did he have you go and clean up his little hot mess down there? I'm sorry, what? Like. Which, again. Who's lying? Whose mess it, was it? Was it Sinjin's There were mess? inquisition agents down there. I mean, was it genuinely Sinjin's mess and he tricked Heldren? 
or is it really Heldren's mess? And he was just like, well, I'll just send her. And if she dies, oh, well. If she dies, she dies. Yeah. If she kills everybody, perfect. Yeah. I don't know. And that's this is one of the most delightful problems with the Inquisition, right? Because right. who knows? Again. Like, you could tell me either you know, thing and I'd be like, Makes right. Sense. Absolute authority. You know, it's like, was this absolute power corrupts? Absolutely. Who? I mean, and she would say she's not corruptible. It's like, well, the demon host that you had says hi and disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine Mori Povich showing up as an interrogator. That was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we have the demon host's body. Um, Yeah. That's that's a little, and I, yeah, again, absolute power corrupts, right? So we have no idea. And I feel like we didn't really get to know Heldren well enough. So, and I don't know if it wasn't deemed important to the narrative or if it really just bolsters it of, God, she doesn't know who she can trust or what's going on. She literally just got here. Right. Like, and Why then of course, all of have, it. Right? Inquisition. Why not all of it? Makes sense. A hundred percent. And you have Jarek, who... I don't know what I feel about him. Like, he seems... For, like, the ten pages we get to meet him. Right. He seems nice. I definitely am. Because we've never seen... You've never seen a Lord Inquisitor do questionable things. Perish the thought. Um... And the whole he doesn't know who Mandrith is. I don't know if that makes me not trust him or if it makes me not trust Mandrith. Or both. Yeah, but which Mandrith? <laughs> All this comes down to that I think being in the Inquisition would be a terrible job prospect. Yeah. For sure. Um, Nall, I don't think knows what's going on with Mandrith. Like, no, I don't think but I mean, I th but I think that's why Nall's with him, right? Because it's kind of easy to fool an Ogren, uh, which makes me wonder about Eloise. Like, did he just let her? Is that just like an an expense? You know, uh, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, I I don't know, and you're absolutely right. Like it's not like he has to really try to fool the Ogren, although he clearly is still right where he's like, "Oh, it's fine," and he leaves. Right? I did like when he's talking about how like, "Oh yeah, this latest thing kind of dinged his patience a little bit." Um, I like the idea that the demon even is like kind of getting sick of like <laughs> acting like I'm everybody's buddy. So what does it all mean in the end? What what happens next? Where does Aster go from here? Where does Mandrith go from here? Who clearly wants to be back in her life? I do think Sabathiel at least is questioning now, right? She's like, mm, he just kind of exited stage right. Yeah. You know, and they were all, they were all kind of questioning that. Like, that was just kind of weird. And she's like, I still have questions. Like, you brought me back and then you're not even going to stick around to, like, to answer any questions. And... Uh, yeah, like you have very, you have every right to ask those questions. And now there's Jarek. Don't know who he is. Or are you going to try to figure this all out, or are you just going to go investigate the Dark Angels? Because good question. Because uh, that won't get you anywhere. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know what what. What is her next step? What is she going to do? Like, I don't know that she really comprehends. Like, she knows that Robbie Bobby's back, but I don't know if she really comprehends that. And, like, what that means is her next step to, like, go and find him out. Um, I feel like if anybody could make a call to his voicemail and be like, yeah, so the Dark Angel, <laughs> there is some stuff going on there. Well, that would be if she could even, like, trust him. And that's also assuming that 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 the um, chapter master of the Knights of Absolution hasn't already left a voicemail going, ah, so. <laughs> I I don't know. Like, part of me wants to say, yeah. I don't know. 
Out that, of now that could be that could be fun. She somehow meets up with the chapter master of the Knights of Absolution, and the two of them work to take down the Dark Angels. That could be hysterical. Oh my god, that would actually be super awesome. Like, oh, I'm sorry, you hate the Dark Angels? So do I. <laughs> Let's be friends. <laughs> do we just become best friends? Yeah, exactly. Do we just become best friends? Yep. Um, yeah, except that, like, we don't like you because you're Inquisition, and that's okay, I don't like you because you're a space marine. Like... <laughs> And together, they learn to overcome their biases. Um, he taught her how to love. She taught him how to live. Oh my God! Get the get out of here. Um, <laughs> Hallmark movie coming soon for Warhammer 40k. Um, there should be Warhammer 40k Hallmark movies. I'm just throwing that out there. Oh my God! Um, love and the Factorum. <laughs> um, you'd watch it. Don't lie to me. Oh my god. I'd make a drinking game out of it. Are you kidding me? It'd be amazing. Um, and we'd get Jen and Solus babies finally. Um, but I like that she's out there. I, I really do like that she's out there. I think she's an interesting little chaotic element running around. Um, maybe. Maybe she tracks down the Dark Angels and does expose them. Maybe I have a feeling that's going to be her next step. Is but then again, she doesn't like any of the the Space Marines. So I don't know. I think she's kind of a she's a fun fun entity on the play on the chessboard now. Well, you know, she's only been dead for like what a hundred years. Yeah, you know that Leo Frick's still alive. That's probably true, honestly. God, that's going to be a conversation, isn't it? He's going to be like the, the the lady that I blew a hole into her midriff. <laughs> I um. I also I want to know his head how is she was alive? cut off. <laughs> I looked it up. We cut off her head. Um. Like it, it, that's a whole like. There's there's so much to unpack with her that I feel like there's easily enough for another book. Oh, well, I heard about pretty much they set up for another book. 100%. I'm, but like sometimes, like sometimes they set up for another book and I'm like, I don't know, guys. No, there's, there's quite a bit here. Oh, yeah. I like it. Um, I do apologize that it took us three weeks on this one. That was all me. Um, our next book is going to be shorter. Yes. By a lot. Yes. As we, Go from one extreme to the other and dive into Helbrecht, which we've had sitting. How long has this been sitting on our shelf? I don't know. But the commenters now have it. So that's all that's important. That is true. Yes, everyone now has it. And yes, we all get to read about the High Marshal of the Black Templars. They're a jovial group and not serious at Since all. July. Oh, well. Ha! Huh, jovial. That works. Jovial. July. They It uh, does work. It does work. Um, like, he's a very happy, very light, light-hearted spirit. Super good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Excellent dancer. Tremendous singing voice. Yes. Um, he is the kind of the total package. I, I'm, yeah, I, I guess I'm just saying that, like, you know, yeah, he would definitely be the lead in the Hallmark 40K movie. Um. I'm excited for it. He's gone through the Rubik Primaris. Um, it's I. Spoilers. He's been chastised, according to the description. He's been chastised by Gulliman. So that was actually it, fun. It, so I've already read the first few chapters. That that was kind of fun. <laughs> oh, excellent! Now we get to see this. This is going to be excellent. I'm very excited for it. I think it'll be good. Uh, we are going to be doing a short turnaround on this. Uh, reading it, we'll be podcasting again next week so that we get back on schedule because we have actually a lot of stuff. Um, a lot has come out recently, which is really exciting and a good problem to have as we lead up towards our book club awards for this year. Yeah, and Christmas break. How are we going to get this all crammed in? I don't know. We'll find out. Good way. question. Uh, <laughs> some of it might bleed over into next year for sure. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, because we have all kinds of stuff and... um. And next podcast, I'll make my complaint that Carrie has the physical copy of our next book, and I do not. I tried. You know what? I can't. I can't deny that you did try, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you. 
Yep. Do you I, want to take a snout, Carrie? Yep. Yeah, I, I did try, though. I really did. But anyway, so thank you all so much. You have listened to the Warhammer 40K podcast regarding Awakenings by George Mann. Be sure to stay with us next time for our next one. Short turnaround once again. Short turnaround for a short book. Hellbrecht by Mark Collins. We can actually have a lot by Mark Collins lately. It's kind of fun. Quite a bit from authors yeah. that we don't often read. We've had no. Mann, we've had Collins. We're going to have Bill, uh, um, Eduardo Alberto on the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's exciting. So, yeah, so much fun. So once again, we are... Haley. What? I don't get to say Gee Haley, which is really fun. Oh, well. My life is hard. I'm sure he's got something in the works. Probably has 10 other books that's going to come all out all at once. So that's just kind, of, kind of what he does. But we, remember, we are an unofficial book club, and we're not affiliated with the Black Library or any of its affiliates. You can uh, you can find our the vidcast on YouTube, and you can find the podcast literally anywhere you get, you get podcasts. I swear to God, I feel like every week I get an email like, you need to join this listing on podcasts i'm like okay why not what's another one i don't care so you can you literally find us anywhere and if you like this podcast so you know please please leave a review subscribe all those wonderful things either with us on youtube or on our on our podcast stations and with that we also have articles on our site where we talk about other book other books that we're reading outside the book book club books so here's my horace heresy plug of the week I just finished another Horus Heresy book. I'm really going to try to get to book 30 by the end of the year. So I think I can do it. Just finished 26. So it's like, what? So it's four more to go. I think I can do this. And I have two Primark novels to get through. Yes. Mordarian and Doran. You know, BFFs forever. Yes, total. That's totally who I would think of as BFFs forever. Absolutely. So please stay a while and read for McCrag. And I am still all fairies. I even have my monk here to prove it. When life gives you lemons, blood for the blood god. You know, that's just good advice. Pretty much. All right, good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>